now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to everyone at home, everyone that will eventually hear this clip uh, on the different platform. I know that we are in the world that is interconnected now by the virtue of uh, media. We thank the Lord for the knowledge and the wisdom uh, that brought forth uh, all the technology that we are enjoying presently in our world. I can't uh, imagine how it would have been if uh, God has not given man the knowledge uh, behind the technology that we are actually enjoying now. Imagine there is no uh, all this provision and we are in the situation we are in. How are we going to reach out to connect to people, to strengthen people? But well, thanks be to God of all knowledge, thanks be to God of all wisdom, who has given us, given men wisdom and knowledge. So tonight, I have the pleasure. My name is uh, Pastor Sam Awolaogo. Uh, uh, simply, Brasal. I love to call myself. Some people call me Pastor Keep It Real. So any of those ones that you find are comfortable. But tonight, I am being invited by this wonderful brother, uh, a pastor and a teacher of God's word, to share with you uh, the will of God concerning uh, Easter period, Good Friday, uh, restoration. What is it all about? Why is this important to your life and to my life? Why is it very crucial to the life of believer and to our world as a whole? Uh, so I have the pleasure of, uh, you know, uh, bringing this message forth as I'm invited by our pastor, Pastor Luke. And I really, really appreciate our love for God together. I really appreciate your love for God, uh, Pastor Luke, and your dear wife, uh, Pastor Nomsa. And I want to bless the Lord for your humble family. I pray Jehovah will continue to strengthen you, uphold you, even as you serve uh, in the kingdom of God. Tonight, uh, I bring you greeting, everyone that is watching us online or that watch this clip later. Very importantly, I want to share what the Lord has been uh, speaking to me in my time of prayer, revealing to me. I'm a man that believes in revelation. Uh, I don't believe so much in mental assertion. Uh, I believe in research. I believe in study, acquiring knowledge. But most importantly, uh, revelation is much, much more important than lifetime of study. When God reveals things to you, it's more than whatever you can acquire through uh, gathering facts. You know, just as you know, the law of the spirit is much more superior to the law of the physical. So tonight, what is Good Friday? What is it about? What is restoration? What are the important? So tonight, I want to start, I think uh, the, 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 I will title this as the power of God's love and the importance of man in God's master plan. I think that, that, that is what crucifixion, uh, the restoration, the crucifixion of Christ, the death of Christ is all about. Uh, I tell you the truth, it's all about the power of God's love to mankind and the importance of man in God's position, in God's master plan, rather, in God's master plan. So the death of Christ is restoration, is crucifixion, is all about revealing the power of God's love to mankind and the important position that man occupies, the important role that man plays in the master plan of God. In the master plan of God. Now, this is very, very important. I found out and I discovered that uh, it is of importance that we come together at this time to discuss this, because if we don't come at this time to discuss this, the world might be confused and the world uh, may not even know what to do. Even believers, every children of God need to walk in the revelation of this truth. Every child of God needs to walk in the revelation of this truth. And I know that as we share the will of God together tonight, the spirit of Christ will dwell among us. And the spirit of the living God will reveal the truth to us. So tonight you are going to hear the truth as the word of God has declared. You are going to hear the will of God. You are going to hear the plan of God. You are going to hear the purpose of God for mankind. 
You are going to hear the plan and his will for you and I. And I want you to take your time to listen to the will of God. And it's so important that you and I walk and understand in this season. Because the Bible talks about by, by understanding are ye men. By understanding are ye men. Uh, very importantly, therefore, where did you and I occupy in the plan of God, in the program of God? How important it is that God so loved mankind so much, according to the book of John chapter 3, verse 16. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, and he gave his only begotten son. For God so loved, he gave. So tonight we are going to be diving very deep into the topic of the love of God that make him to send his only begotten son. So I believe the fundamental of God of, of Christ's death is because of love. So as a believer, every believer must walk in the revelation of the knowledge of the love of God. For you to be a triumphant child of God, for you to possess a mentality of victory in life, you must, without any out of doubt, walk in the revelation of the unending love of God for mankind, which the Lord finalized by sending his only begotten son on the cross. Now, first and foremost tonight, redemption is, you know, is Christ. given to the world as a proof of love. Christ given to the world as a proof, a package of God's love to mankind. In the book of Genesis, we understood. That's very important. So the entire week that we are celebrating the Easter period, Good Friday, uh, Restoration Sunday, it is a proof of total package of love. I will call it final package of love that God has for mankind. Don't forget, we understand according to the word of the Lord that God created man in his very image. The book of Genesis 1 from verse 26 downward, 28. We saw that God said, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. This is very crucial. and This is very important. He created us in his own likeness, in his own, you know, in his own image. The essence of God we are, we carry the embodiment of his person and his power. Now, without further explanation, I believe every child of God should understand and study the word image and likeness. I want you to please do that assignment because it is very crucial to your Christian living, to, your, you know, to you as a child of God. So therefore, as a believer, we must know what it is to be an image of God, what it is to be created in the very likeness of God. I talked about the importance of the fact that redemption, you know, crucifixion, and Christ's death which is by the way of the cross is a revelation of the unending love, unreserved love that God has for mankind. In the book of Genesis, we saw there in Genesis chapter 6, I want you to please follow me. Genesis chapter 6. If you read with me, you see the word of the Lord and I'm going to read the word. Please, let's quickly read the word. Because the word of God gives us light. The word of God gives us understanding. In the book of Genesis chapter 6, we saw something very, very crucial there. I'm, not, I'm, I'm going to read, you know, very quickly because of time. I know I have a bit of time and I know we can always uh, uh, get information. But I want you to get information by the word of God. The word of God is the will of God. The word of God is the mind of God. The word of God is the, is the plan of God. The word of God is the wisdom of God. In the book of Genesis chapter 6, now it came to pass, I will read from verse 3 because of our time. From verse 3, Genesis chapter 6 verse 3. And the Lord said, my spirit shall no longer strive with man forever. For he is indeed flesh, yet 
the days shall be one. The day, yet his days shall be one. 120 years. His days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the Son of God came into the daughter of man, and they bore children to them, to them, those were giant mighty men who were of old, men of renown. In verse 6, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry. Now, please take note of this choice word that God uses. When he saw the activity of man after the fall, don't forget the entire man can fell in Adam. We all fell in Adam. We all fell in Adam. And after that, from that moment in time, because of the bond of love that God has for you and I, for mankind, God is looking for a way, eternal way, to resolve the relationship between him and mankind because of the love that he has for us. So tonight, the Bible says something in that verse 6, verse 5. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thought of his head at was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he has made man. That's a very powerful word. We are going to get to that word in a minute. And don't forget God is the word. Now, if God could say he was sorry to created man, why would the Almighty use that word? We are going to get there in a minute. That he was sorry that he made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. Please listen to me because we want to explore the power of his love. That will be the only, the only point out of about five points that I'm going to deal with tonight. The power of his love that made him to become man in Christ and went all the way to the cross to suffer humiliation, oppression. They freak him naked. They put the crown of thorns on his head. They scourged him. It is, not, it is not beaten. Every stroke he received, blood was gushing out. Why would the Almighty went that far for mankind? Because of the bond of love. Because of his unending love. And because he has shared too much of himself with mankind. Now, look at that scripture. I want you to look with me. The Bible says his heart was grieved that he has created man. So, the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the earth, from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air. For I am sorry that I've made them but Noah find grace in the sight of the Lord. Brethren, I'm going to stop there so that we can lay emphasis on the word that God uses. I want you first and foremost, wherever you are tonight, uh, follow me and please listen to me very closely. I'm a man by God's grace that God gives revelation to his word. He said to me, uh, 2008, when he started revealing the reason for my call to me. He said, you will make men see light by my word. So I want to help you to see light from God's word tonight. I want to help us to see the will of God in God's word. Now, let's go very quickly. The mystery of his unending love of God was revealed in Christ. And God took him to the cross in order to prove that love. Now, God created man in his image, in his likeness. And God said to you and I that we should dominate the earth, representing his will. But after the work of creation, man fell in Adam. God was trying all his best to get man back. He found Noah. Before he found Noah, 
God was actually regretting. God was actually sorry that he has made man. Why will God be sorry? The Almighty be sorry. Now, let me tell you why this is, this words are so important. God said, I'm sorry. If you read other translations of the Bible, God said, I regret it. In fact, another translation said, the Lord, he repented the Lord. I think that is old King James for making man. Why will God use all this strong word? Could it mean? You know, I, 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 you know I, why I was looking into this, could it mean that God has created you and I? Uh, let, let, let's give the example of when you are downloading, you know, you want to download a document or a movie, uh, something important from one uh, PC uh, to another or to, a, to, to, to uh, a, a form of maybe memory stick or a, you know, to another computer or, or a disk. And your plan was to download 50% of the document or let's say 45% or let's say 60%. And you know, sometimes when you are downloading, you, you see a kind of a circle trying to show you how many percentage of the information you have downloaded or that is already downloaded. Or you will see a green, a kind of a green line that is going. I think in my own conclusion, I haven't looked at the unending love that God continued to demonstrate towards man. When the Lord was making you and I, he said, let us make man in our own image. And after our likeness, I think in the process of downloading and fashioning and making us, I think the process, God wanted to say, I want to download 50%. I want to download 70%. And you know, it can be funny when you are downloading stuff from PC. Sometimes you are just looking and you are like, okay, this thing we download. Okay, this is 60%, this is five, you know, 75%. Before you know, you just see completed 95%, 100%. I think something of such happened in the process of God making man. I will reveal to you why do I come to this conclusion or why do I make this example? The choice of word that God uses to express his, 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 his dissatisfaction towards us reveal to you and I that you are much, much more of a value and you have possessed, you have taken more of him to the extent that he could not destroy us. He has to go all the way to the cross. I'm coming and I don't want to jump the gun and I want you to please follow me with all of your heart. So the choice of word that God uses in verse 6 of that Genesis chapter 6, the choice of word that God uses in Genesis chapter 6 verse, you know, verse 5, shows it is such a strong word. Because God in his master plan strategically position you and I to be a co-creator with him. Love share itself. God has share almost all his being with man. We took almost 85% of his personalities in the process of him downloading, man, making, creating, fashioning man. The Bible says, and man was lifeless, and the Lord breathed the breath of his nursery. And by that breath, we become a living being. Now you are going to understand some things with me tonight, so that you can understand what is the mystery of the love that God has for man. Oh, God love us. How, why did he love you? How did he love you? I want to show you tonight how he loved you. I believe with all of my heart, after more study, my personal revelation of God's love is a process that I've shared with you now. God is trying to download 45% of him into man, 65% of him into man, before he realizes almost 100% download completed. And God said, I created you in my very image. Maybe 45%, maybe 55%. 
maybe 85 percent of God personality, the omnipotency of his power, the majesty of his person was downloaded into man. No wonder. No wonder God said it depleases him. He repented. He regretted that he made man when he saw the activities of man. Unfortunately, because of his unending love, he could not destroy man. Because we have took too much of who he is. Now, I'm going to show you this. You remember the story when they left Egypt and uh, Moses went on Mount Sinai and um, when Moses returned, he met all men. Uh, can you imagine? The same men that saw the Red Sea parted, the same men that ate manna, the same men that see the mighty works in Egypt, which the law wrought. Moses went on Mount Sinai before he returned within 40 days. Man has made another God for themselves. And God was angry. God was furious. God said to Moses, I will destroy man. Can you imagine that Moses was giving the law counsel? This is how powerful, how, 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 you know, treasured man is in the program of God. The Almighty was being given cancer by Moses. Moses said, if you destroy them, they will say, because you cannot take them to the land of Israel, the yeah. land of Canaan. That's why you destroy them. Now, I remember uh, David, Thank you, know, celebrating and glorifying God in the book of Psalm. David said, who has given you counsel? But by the virtue of our placement in the master plan of God, being the co-creator with them, for the fact that we have taken almost 85% of his personality, Moses was standing advising God. Also, Abraham did the same thing. You remember when the Lord was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? The Lord said, if I could only find one, can I do anything without revealing it to my friend? But the Lord could not find only one righteous. Now, as powerful and as important as we are in the program of God, there is something very important that I need you to understand tonight. God could not make a final resolution of love of his love to mankind in goat, in bulls, in sheep, in all the sacrifice of the Old Testament. God has to come down in the likeness of man in Christ in order for him to put a final amendment and res you know, res re resolution into the relationship that he has between man a name, in order for you and I to be able to go by the blood of Christ again, to meet with Jesus, to meet with God, in order for us to have unhindered access to the throne of grace. So after my study, I discovered that, that God uses this strong word because of the place we occupy in his plan. Because of the power he has shared with mankind. Because he has given us a will and a choice to make that put us in the very class of God. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 85, the word of the Lord speaking, he said, For ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. But they know not, that, that do they understand? So the entire foundations of the earth is out of course. I say, You are gods. Present tonight, wherever you are, listen to this word of truth. The word of truth here is because the Almighty, who is the creator of the heavens and the earth, he could have as well, because when I was studying the Bible, looking at this scripture, the Lord said he regretted. The Lord said he's sorry. The Lord said he repented for making man. Now, in the, take note of this. Please take this. In the law of production, there is no manufacturer. There is no infector. There is no creator that ever, ever regretted creating anything. Not, now talk of the Almighty who made the heavens and the earth. 
He could have as well restarted in Adam. He could have as well restarted. It was still very early in Noah. He could have as well restarted. I mean, what do I mean by restarted? Recreating man all over again. But God couldn't because of the depth of his love for mankind. God couldn't because of his, you know, the unending love. Because he has seen, he has poured, he has deposited almost 85% of his person into us. I come to conclusion that the love of God, the unending love of God for mankind was what was playing up when God was making man. You know, when you are in a love relationship with somebody, whatever the person asks you, you give him, if you are truly in love. I think God loves us so much, too much. We are too much a value to him. And he willingly deposited all that he is, almost all that he is into us. And he could not wash you and I being destroyed. He has to pay the ultimate price on the cross of Calvary by himself to redeem you and I back, to ransom us back in victory of the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. So brethren, wherever you are tonight, you have to celebrate that unending love. You have to celebrate that unending love. He couldn't have stopped the downloading. He has poured too much. The power of his love draw all of his personality. Download all of his person into man. No creator. I go back to that word. It's very important. We are going to stop there tonight because that is where the revelation of God's love is. God regretted. God was sorry. God repented that he made man. Why? Because he couldn't destroy them. In fact, do you know that after the flood, after this flood, when the Lord called the covenant with Noah, the Lord did not just call the covenant with Noah. The Lord called the covenant with Noah with a physical sign that will bring him remembrance. He put his name under a note. When he could no longer swear by any other greater, he put himself under a note with a rainbow as a physical sign to remind him at all times. Why will God go to all this extent? Because of his bond of love. Because of his bond of love. And it is very important for you and I to come to revelation of this as a child of God, as a believer, so that we will not be tossed here and there with all manner of doctrines. Because when you come into the revelation of the knowledge of the love of God for you as a believer, and you realize you come to the understanding of the revelation of the ultimate price he paid on the cross, then you know your position and placement in the master plan of God in rescuing the heart. And this is very crucial. This is very important. So, if no creator, if no manufacturer, if no, no inventor or author ever regretted of their product, the last thing that will happen is that every manufacturer, they will recall their product they will start all over again. And I want to share this with you. Please take this for me. There is nothing man has ever created that is stronger or powerful than man. No. Coronavirus is not stronger than us. Coronavirus, I can tell you wherever you are tonight, that coronavirus cannot wipe away woman race. Can never. I can tell you that. It has come. It will go back to where it comes from, by the blood of Christ, in the name of Jesus. This is the revelation what a season, what a time. And I know that it is finished. Coronavirus is finished. But very important tonight. Genesis chapter 6. Uh, I want you to follow me. Genesis chapter 6, Genesis chapter 11. The Lord make certainly now, you know, powerful statement about man. To show to man how powerful we are. How important he has placed us 
In the book of Genesis 11, you remember that story when they were building the Tower of Babel. They said, we'll build a tower. We'll make a name for ourselves. Uh, I'm going to go there very shortly. And this is where God is having struggle with man. And I want to tell you, believers, children of the most high, anyone that is hearing me now, we have almost 8 billion or over 8 billion people on the earth today. Christian is a little, uh, maybe over 2 billion or 2 billion people who are uh, Christians. Some of us are falling short. Some of us are not meeting up with the requirement, but we profess to be Christian, over 2 billion. Now, by the virtue of number and the work of creation, you know, by the virtue of number and the work of creation, you know that that number, that margin is a lot. The margin is a lot. The margin is a lot. Brethren, wherever you are, I believe you are hearing me. I believe you are hearing me. Very importantly, please listen and let's listen good tonight. Because the word of God cannot change. The word of God cannot fail. The Lord said something in the book of Genesis 11. You know what he said? He said, the, the, you know, the people, the man, the people said, okay, they want to create it. You know, they, they said, we will not build a tower that will be high as God. That's the story. I'm trying to paraphrase because of time. And they said to themselves, they said, we will now build a tower and then we will not be scattered abroad. If you read the book of Genesis 11, I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 1, the plan of God for mankind is to dominate the earth, multiply on it. Man raised by their will, by our choices. Man rise up or rose up against that will. They said we will build a tower so that we will not be scattered abroad. God used two strong words in two places we have discovered from the pages of scripture. Number one, in Genesis 1, the Lord said, let us make man in our image. When the Lord wants to scatter their language in Genesis 11, the Lord said, let us go down. God said, let us make man in our image. In Genesis 11, God said, let us go down and scatter their language. Problem with mankind now, which God is trying to resolve because He loved you and I too much, is we are using the power of our will against the cross every day. We are using the power of our choices against the cross every day. So, if you are going to ask me, what should be the best prayer for every believer? I will tell you, it's the same prayer that Christ prayed when the burden to fulfill destiny was born. And I, and I want to tell you, I want to tell you this very importantly. I believe the final deed on the cross should be the greatest celebration of all for believers. Because the day a child is born is very important, but much more important is the day that that child fulfills his destiny. Christ fulfilled and accomplished all things. It was said of him that it might be fulfilled, that it might be you know, fulfilled. Jesus, that was said of him, every stage of his life, that was recorded about him, that it must be fulfilled, that it must be fulfilled. Please listen to me very well tonight, brethren. I want to encourage you wherever you are to listen to the truth and the word of God. So, the Lord said in that Genesis 11, the Lord said to mankind, he said, that which they have imagined, he said, no man can stop it. I'm trying to show to you the power of man, the program of God, and the unending love that took him to the cross because we are in this season. The unending love because of the key role man play or man is to play in the master plan of God for the entire heavens and the earth. It's so important so that we know why he needed the Almighty need to die for you and I in order to redeem us back to himself. The, there is no any other creation that can took, take our place in his program, in his plan. Now, very importantly, so the Lord said, let us go down and scatter their language. Genesis chapter 6, going back there, the Lord said, and the Lord regretted for making man. Why will he regret it for making man? Because of his love. So when man began to take illegal advantage of God's love on the earth, when man began to see, use the power of his will against the word of God, against the plan of God, God could not bear it anymore. God was sorry. God repented. God regretted that he made man. But because of his love, 
he has to send his only begotten son again to the cross for mankind. God could only regret it. I want to go back. Please listen to this. In the law of production, there is a saying that says, if you follow the process, you will get the product. No author we ever regretted. There is not a man ever created that is so powerful that man. Man will destroy it and start all over again. Because every creator, every author, every manufacturer, every inventor, they have the working knowledge of their product. They have the You remember sometimes ago, uh, Toyota called back some of their products. And they start them all over again. If they can't repair, they will replace. No manufacturer struggle with their spare parts. But in the case of man, God could not destroy us. Why? Because of the bound of love. Now, very, very crucial and very important. The Bible says, God was grieved. If you go and study that word, God regretted. The Bible says, God was grieved in his heart that he has made man. If you read Genesis chapter 6, verse 7. You know, when you study the word grieved, what does it mean? In the contemporary dictionary, the word grief means a feeling of intense sorrow. The Almighty was sorrowful concerning your life and my life. This is why redemption, crucifixion, crucifixion, no, fission, the death of Christ was very, very important to your life and to my life today and to our world at large today. What does it mean to grieve? It means great distress. God was distressed. Can you imagine the Almighty is distressed? What could make a manufacturer? I tell somebody yesterday, I was sharing this with somebody. As good as Mercedes Benz is, each engine of Mercedes Benz is designed to last for 50 years. But do you know that the chairman of Mercedes Benz, Mercedes as an organization, will not lose his sleep if he ever hear or heard that a Mercedes Benz has a fault. But the Almighty God, the Almighty God was grieved because of our misdeed, our sin, our unrighteous behaviors. This is very crucial to mankind. What does it mean to be grieved? The Bible talks, you know, the, the dictionary makes us understand. It is to mourn over a lost one, over somebody that you love, over your loved one. A money. When you say somebody is grieving, you say he's grieving of, of his loss, of his death, of the death of his loved one. Grief connotes unending sorrow alone. Now, tonight, very important. It is in this moment, please, let me bring and tidy up together because the only topic we are dealing with tonight as in regard to Easter, to restoration, to the death of the Christ is John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world. Now, I want you to take note of something in that scripture. For God, the Bible didn't say for God loved the world. The, and this is, you know, the English is uh, uh, is an interpretation of you know uh, uh, you know the, the English Bible. The, the Bible was not written in English, so the Bible was actually translated into English. Now, when you look at the strong adjective or strong assertion in that John six thirty three, the Bible didn't say God love. The Bible said, "For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son." So, this pain in the heart of God, this grief in the heart of God, in the book of Genesis chapter 6, verse 6, and going to verse 7, is what brought about the final package of redemption. The final package of redemption. This grief in the heart of the Almighty, this grief in the heart of the Messiah, in the heart of our King, is what brought about Final package. 
And I want you to listen to this very well. It's very, very crucial. It's very important. Because this is the mystery of the cross. This is where a believer can stand. You see, thank God for all the wonders in the blood, all the miracles in the blood. But I can tell you tonight that they are not as important as a believer discovering the love, the package love, the final package of love to mankind. When you discover how valuable, how treasurable, no wonder the Bible says he has engrafted us in the palm of his hand. And the word of the Lord said, it grieved the Lord for it. God regretted for making mankind. Why? No manufacturer struggle to create, to start all over again any of their products. I told you, a Mercedes-Benz chairman will not have any regret if a Mercedes-Benz pack up on highway. Why? Because they have the working knowledge of their product. They can start all over again. No producer, no manufacturer, no auto ever struggle to restart or to refashion their product in a different format. But when it is man's turn, God could not start all over again. Why? Because he has downloaded too much of himself to you and I. His love for you could not make him to do that. So he has to come up with the final package by sending his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Please, this is why as a believer, our message must be focused on the will of God. You know, Paul's praying to the church of Ephesus. Paul said this in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 16. Paul said, after I heard of your faith in God and your love for all the saints, meaning that the church of Ephesians, they are perfect church because these are two bases for our Christian living, for our kingdom living. For you to live acceptable life as a believer, you must have faith in God and you must have love for all the saints. Meaning that the church of Ephesus, they are perfect. Paul said, I haven't heard of your faith and love. I do not cease to give thanks to God for you and to make mention of you in my prayer all the time that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and knowledge in the knowledge of him that your eyes of understanding may be enlightened that you may know the hope of your calling. The two billion Christians on the earth today, we must discover or rediscover the reason why we are called. Our calling is not for breakthrough. Our calling is not for deliverance. We are no longer in the kingdom of darkness. The blood transfers us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his only son. The ultimate price was paid once and for all. You can no longer be cursed. You can no longer be enchanted. You can no longer, the devil has no legal right over your life anymore, except the right you give to him. Now, this is the faith. I'm teaching you the faith now. I'm talking about the faith. I mean the faith in God, in Christ. Jesus said, it is finished. All sacrifice come to an end. This is the faith. Now, going back to our study, and friends, family of God, wherever you are tonight, please listen to me. The Bible says God regretted. I, I'm capitalizing on that word because they are choice word. God repented. God was sorrowful because he made man. Why? I've told you, because of his unending love. Because because he has shared too much of his personality with us. It is in this moment of grief that God said the package of love, the final package of love that I will give to humanity, I will demonstrate it in my son, Jesus Christ. So God came up with the final package of love, finalized on the cross by sending his only begotten son, friend, it is vital and it's very crucial for us as a believer to know that the most important revelation any believer must operate on 
and be fully aware of is what does the death of Christ mean to me. Jesus' death for me is much more important than every miracle I said to you. Through his blood, we have pussy, our sin is covered. With any time a believer sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. If anyone sin, little children, let no man deceive you. He that practice righteousness is righteous. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Redemption position us. Crucifixion position us for a life of righteousness. By his death, we have on in that access to the throne of grace. Praise the Lord. So, the birth of Christ is important, but his death is very, very crucial and very important, and we must walk in the revelation of that. So, by the blood that is shed on the cross, which we now celebrate Good Friday, is very, very important to every Christian adventure and every Christian living. So this was the day, the year, the plan of God was actually fulfilled to the earth. Please listen to this. Good Friday is the day, you remember the prayer that Jesus prayed? He said, not my will, O God, but yours be done. He said, Father, I wish that this call passed me over, but not my will. Brethren, today, the reason why mankind, we are bringing horror like coronavirus to ourselves, and that is in a bigger scale, but there are so many people, and I want to tell you this, that are using their will, the wicked ones. Believer, please, we need to rise up after this epidemic. My prayer is that the way we are praying now, we will pray like that in greater dimension after this season pass. That we'll all awake to our responsibility and our call. Just like Paul said, he said that you may know the hope of his calling. Friends and family of God, believer, children of the most high, this is the mystery behind the cross. His love for humanity. The fact that love shares himself and he cannot destroy man because he has poured too much of himself into you and I. Very important, therefore, the death of Christ is the day or was the day that the deal was done. The standard was set. It was the final bill that was paid. He said, ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body, in your spirit, in your soul that belong to God. From tonight, your life will glorify God. Your destiny will glorify God. I want you to walk in the revelation of the love of God, the unending love of God. I want you to walk in the revelation of the final price that I paid. And then begin to glorify God. And I declare once again, I want you to be possessed with that mentality. You are bought with a price. Therefore, your life and my life must glorify God. Your destiny and my destiny must glorify God. Everything about your life must be to his glory. Now, as a believer, I said our focus must be right. The church of Jesus, our focus must be right. We must return to the cross of Christ. We must return to that final day. And we must embark on the work of reconciliation. It's the time for church to get, we need to get the focus right. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. Church, the two billion is the only hope for the earth. You can see how the entire earth is out of course. Man is using his will every day. The same thing that happened in Genesis 6, Genesis 11, is still the same challenge that man is still faced with it today, even though God has went ahead of man, gone ahead of man, to give us his son Jesus as a final package of love to redeem mankind back to himself. So he said, whosoever believeth on him will not be condemned, but they will have everlasting life. 
the blow position us for a life of conquest, a life of victory. So, friend, tonight, just like I lightly said, the revelation I want you to draw on tonight is the revelation of his love. The revelation of the fact that you are peculiar people. God has deposited too much of his personality into who you are. You are a treasure in the hand of your king. So your life cannot be, you see, an unrighteousness cannot have dominion over you anymore. You are not supposed to be bound. I love this song very much. Let my life bring you joy and not pain, Lord. Let me live in your will for my life. That is how you design life to be, Lord. Help me, Lord, to live how I ought to live. Let my life bring you joy and not pain, Lord. Let me live in your will for my life. So your prayer, my prayer should be, Father, let me live in your will for my life. And Jesus asked Peter, lovest thou me more than this? Peter said, I love you. Jesus asked again, lovest thou me more than this? Our desire as a believer must be right. He said, first, prayer must be made for all men, for kings, for leaders, for people in the authority. The way we pray now as a child of God, the way we are praying now, if we are praying like that before this incident, the Lord will have revealed and will have go, went ahead of the enemy. So as a pastor, as a believer, as a church, we cannot, our focus cannot be the same focus of the world. We cannot be chasing what they were chasing in the, when they were building the Tower of Babel. They said, we will make name for ourselves. Democracy is a philosophy of making name for ourselves. Everybody to himself. Everybody, my household, my car, I want to build my own house. I want to have my own name. Everybody wants to make name. Even people are even using the name of God today to make name for themselves. How do I know that? If you are a child of God who don't live according to the standard of the Bible, all your passion is to make name for yourself. If you are children, a pastor that you are not operating the will of God, you are just trying to make a name for yourself. If you are a husband, you are not living a love life with your wife. You are, you are trying to create a chaotic world. If you are a wife, you are not in, you know, in love, subjection to your husband, just as unto the Lord. I'm sharing this with you tonight because even the two billion, we are not standing. And we are the only hope to rescue the over six billion. Do you see that we have assignment? Now, my prayer tonight is that the Lord of the wicked will not rest upon the Lord of the righteous. My prayer tonight is that we will not suffer with the wicked. Jesus prayed the prayer very powerfully. He said, Father, I do not pray that you take them away from the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. So Jesus recognized that there are evil one on the earth. Jesus recognized the activity of the evil one on the earth. And you and I, the Bible says, casting down all imagination and bring, you know, and every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring them in subjection. Who are the ones to cast them down? You and I, the two billion. So therefore, our passion, we can't be lost in after the things of the world, the way the world is lost in after. We must guard our spiritual bed. We must stand, we must stand in gap for our nation for our land, for our world, we must take them back to the cross. We must take them back to the final love of Christ, of God for humanity. Tonight, I believe it's such a joy for me to meet with you in your house, for you to recognize and understand this message in clear time. You will need to listen to it at least three times. Why do I need to say that? The more I spoke about it, the more the Lord gave me revelation. The more I talk about it, the more I see revelation. God was grieved for your sake. God regretted. He could have as well started you all over again, but his love could not. His flow of love, his flow of unending love could not. And that took him to the place where he came up with final idea 
of sending his only begotten son to rescue mankind back to himself. This season will pass, but my question to you as a child of God is that who are you going to be after this season? Do you want to return to your same way of doing things? Chasing what is not lost? The word of the Lord says, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto it. Tonight, I speak to you by the spirit of the living God. I speak to you and I pray I commit you to the hand of the Father tonight. Every word of my mouth as the Lord has dropped revelation in my heart, will bring impact to your life, change to your destiny. And you and I will live every day of our life, minding the finished work of, of Calvary, and minding the package of love, walking in the light and the revelation of how valuable you and I are in the master plan of God. The Lord God Almighty bless you. Wherever you are tonight, under the sound of my voice, or anytime you are listening to this message, I want you to know one thing for sure, that by the blood of Christ, you are positioned to reign in life. You are positioned to rule in life. You are positioned to dominate again. The word of the Lord speaking, he said, as the living father has sent him, and he lived by the father, even so as he sent you. So tonight, Jehovah bless you, prosper you, and I pray tonight after this incident that the Lord will reposition the righteous. The Lord will give us influence over nation. The Lord will position us in places of influence so that we can tame all the activity of the evil one. I can tell you for a fact, there is nothing happening on the earth that woman agent is not behind it. All these incidences, there are woman agents that know more than you and I know. And this is why we need to take advantage of the Holy Ghost to reveal to us what is the enemy up to. Because the enemy is always up to something. I pray tonight that my Father will grant you continually your journey of destiny, revelation of his will, revelation of his word, and most importantly, you and I will walk in the revelation of his unending love for mankind. Father, we thank you, Lord. I cover your people once again tonight with the blood of Jesus, and I declare by the blood, your life is covered and you are preserved in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord. Please, uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to be a blessing and continually the ministry of our dear brother, our pastor, our friend, Pastor Luke, the Lord will continue to move it forward. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Father, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name.